and we are now. This is now a recording. Is that the way you do it, Andre? No, no, like when you click it, there's actually a, a person saying it. If you have the latest version of Zoom. Zoom? I know GoToMeeting does it, but I haven't heard that on Zoom. Yeah. We shall find out. So thank you very much, everybody, to join us today. Um, today is um, also a great opportunity to be connected around the world. And um, as you know, we had last minute change. So thank you so much, Paul and Andre, to jump in um, and to explain us how the Netherlands does it. I think it's very interesting how so many different groups, you know, being col um, collaborating in the community, <clears throat> growing the community for the last quite a few years, um, there is just so much going on. So how one area can come together to align and bring value um, across. Um, so without further ado, uh, go for it, guys. The floor is yours. Thank you. Cool. Um, thank you very much. So just to go through, because I deliberately asked Andre this morning for his Amsterdam user group or the Amsterdam user group slide deck so we can do it a kind of similar style. Um, so first of all, uh, these are your three hosts here today. Uh, there's Inez, there's myself, and there's Sarah. Um, and uh, we are part of the Your Leading Enclave. It's, it's all done by various people. It's very much a community effort. Um, so if you've got any questions, obviously you can ask. If you want to reach out to us, uh, any of us afterwards, then you're very much welcome. Um, before we get begin, we are recording. The slide deck won't be available because it's five. Well, it could be available if you want, let me know. It's these three or four slides. Um, we've already discussed waving and turning on the camera. I really appreciate everyone that said, I'm eating or whatever, um, or I'm in a noisy environment. But it's, it's really cool because it helps us give some personality to it all rather than uh, faceless blobs on the screen. We're all here, we're all human. So that's cool. If you've got any questions, you can shout them out, but equally, if you want to pop them in the chat, um, we're very happy with that. And this is a hint of how we do it, but for later on, um, and it's, I like to think that it's not necessary, but if we put the background rules in, everyone's in that same space. So for the chat session, what we're saying is, speak for, what we've learned is speak for up to two minutes to put your thought across or your question across, because that's hopefully enough time for you to articulate that and that means that everyone has time to share uh, their comments and observations and again this is actually what we say at the Amsterdam user group we're really upfront with people about how we're managing it because then we're all on the same wavelength and we've also managed everyone's expectations and I even say it in this slightly this style I'm explaining what we do as we go along we are on Twitter at your leading is there anything else um there we go. Uh, so it's a welcome. We're doing how does the Netherlands do it? Um, I should just explain that this was originally meant to be how does uh, Japan do it? Um, they do it in a different way. I was really excited to be able to, uh, we were really uh, excited to be able to showcase their culture and how they do it. And we're going to have to do that at a different stage. So yeah, that, that's just going to come later. There's time for freestyle chat and we're going to wrap it up at uh, three o'clock, whether it's your bedtime, whether it's afternoon tea, or whether you're on the Levenses, or very much it still appears on breakfast. Um, that's all cool. Um, is there anything else? There we go. That's it. Uh, so I'll now stop the slide deck because then we can see each other's faces. So stop the share. Uh, welcome to the few people who've trickled in. It's very cool. Um, I should just explain that Sean was meant to be here, a family requirement came up so that's the reason why he's not there um these things happen from time to time so uh, it just is what it is um so i was thinking about this earlier today i know that the netherlands is an amazing place i'm very uh, proud to be part of the community and it's possibly best just to set the scene uh, very quickly so when i the knowledge comes from myself um and also we've got we did have yeah justina jk is on the screen uh that's justina she may wave at some point she may say hello at some point uh we've got andre uh on the screen and he, he's certainly i've asked him to interrupt me when i waffle or just go on too long because that's how we work as a team 
Um, so when I turned to, oh, Claire's back again. Hello, Claire. Sorry. Um, so when I turned up three and a half years ago, uh, no, four years ago, start of 2017, someone else can do the maths. Um, I'd already visited the Netherlands a couple of times and all that there was, and I'm going to say that, I mean, it was still great, but, you know, we're more now. All that there were were a developer user group, which was meeting from time to time uh, using Salesforce provided content and a nonprofit group, not too sure what they were doing, but they were certainly meeting for drinks. And then there was an Amsterdam user group, which was 10 people. And that's the one I want to concentrate on 10 people crowded around a TV. And that was absolutely great. But I thought with all that potential and all that energy and people being really excited, I thought that they could do a lot more. So I can't say what part I had. I can certainly actually say what part Andre and Justina and uh, Tanya, who's not here, had and Rob had as well, actually. So I forgot about the Rob and his user group as well. They're definitely there as well. Um, but three, uh, But at this point in 2020, there's now something, COVID notwithstanding, it's obviously played around with things. Uh, but there's, at the last count, there was something like 18 different groups here in the Netherlands. So we've gone for three or four groups to 18. All of the groups meet more often and all of the groups have more participants. So on any, calcula on any calculation, we've, it's grown and it's exceeded, it's possibly exceeded the Salesforce growth. Don't know. Uh, but I, th I, think, I think we're ahead of the growth and everyone is very engaged. So, well, not everyone, but lots of people are engaged. So that's where we're coming from. We're coming from small three or four groups meeting at random times to lots of groups meeting on a regular basis with lots of attendees and people very vocal and very active within that ecosystem. So I was thinking, how did we get from there, uh, from where we were to where we are now? And I was thinking, oh, it's all about the tools, but actually it's about the individual groups doing things well, because you can't act as a team unless the individual players are also strong, is my hypothesis, certainly about the way that we're doing it. So um, it's building on individual group success. So one of the things that we make sure we do is we have uh, open welcoming environments. When we, uh, everyone is welcomed, on, uh, so not showing anything on the screen at the moment, as far as I'm aware. Um, I can put some bullet points later. I didn't get to the bullet point stage. Um, hopefully people can see me. Um, so um, it's very important to be opening and welcoming so that when people walk through the door the first time, that they feel that they are part of that community. So rather than just wandering into a room, someone is there saying, hello, welcome. We're really pleased to see you. What are you looking for today? You know, to make sure that we're meeting those needs and sense checking that at every single stage uh, along the journey. Um, I've certainly been to groups where people come in and they just pick up their badge and then they're not too sure what to do. I guess the point that I'm now working out is if you set people's expectations when they walk through the door, they say, oh, everyone's warm and friendly this is what I'm also meant to be so that they pick up that habit and then they pass it on straight to the next person that comes it's certainly been that I've been organized that I've been organizing events and been a bit caught people being caught in traffic or whatever and so the the first person to come and say they go hi hi and it's like really great to see you I know we haven't met before but can you just hand the badges out to the next people that come in so that I can go and set up the rest of the evening and that works. People aren't afraid to do that. So if you're kind of uh, welcoming and honest with people and friendly about it, not telling them, but asking them, people are very likely to engage and aren't going to be worried and will happily do that and help you out. Um, the next thing that we get right on an individual level is about diversity. I am a huge, huge, huge... Well, we don't get it right. We try to get it right. It's... Uh, it's possibly always going to be a battle, uh, but there's always room for it. There's certainly room for improvement at our stage. Um, the thing is that like classically, 
uh, women are underrepresented in the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, we see that when they're applying for jobs and things like that. So one thing that we do is we make sure that in all our media that we do, in all our discussions, we reach out to those who are happy in being there of the other gender, of another gender, and we make sure that we get their input. Um, but also when we're doing anything marketing, we make sure that we have a diverse crowd represented in that marketing, even if it's one person. I've been, very, again, very honest with people and say, can, we're about to take a group photo. Can we please have some women towards the front so that other women who are viewing these photos can see that they will find a welcoming crowd? So we've had to call it out for what it is. We're not, we don't do it in a devious nature, I like to think. But the only way to improve on these things is to start somewhere and build on it. And uh, I certainly know from my own background that seeing yourself represented in the communications is really, really important. Um, and again, that also flows through to the content. We put more effort in sometimes to finding content from different people, but we want to see all those flavors represented because if we don't put that effort in, it's never going to change quite frankly. Um, that's, you know, I'd love to be in a situation where you don't uh, have to put that effort in, but it's, it's always possible um, we get there in the end. Um, the other thing about diversity is it's not just diversity for diversity's sake, it's about perspective. It's that I might think that, some, uh, that, I might think that something's correct, but Andre, for instance, who's got that uh, native Dutch background, will say, no, that's not gonna work for the audience. And so we, we have robust, not that robust, but you know, we certainly have discussions on what's gonna work. Um, but there's also, and this actually comes in much later, there's also the confidence. We all here want to be user group leaders. And that means that we feel that there is something that we can offer to people. So it's not about waiting for the community to ask us. It's about us being upfront and saying, this is the offer see how you like it. If you wait for others, and we've seen this in our, in our own community, if you wait for others to ask for something, they don't always have the ideas about what's available. So we have to bring in those ideas and present them and then see whether they land or don't land and who likes them and who doesn't like them. Cool, okay. Um, so, and again, this comes through later on. So looking at the time, about halfway. Um, so we do take it seriously, both on the local and the national level, we put in a lot of effort into making sure it's right. We've had discussions, uh, I think everyone's had these discussions and it's about 10 hours per user group leader per meeting. So again, it goes back to the, the use, there's no point, it's very hard to make the national finger success if the local groups aren't doing it right. You want to get that level of best practice. Um, so we put that effort in. It's still fun, but that doesn't mean to say that it's not hard work trying to work out to get that best content. Um, and then we're, we the um, come into it. The last, possibly the last part of it is that we are ourselves. We get direction from sales for, we get advice from Salesforce, and that's uh, changed recently. And just checking that recording, I still am. Um, but we have to represent what our community's needs are. So we're really pleased with the current direction from Salesforce where they give us a template and they say, it's fine for you to vary from the template, but here are some suggestions. What works over in America in terms of how things are presented, pardon me, but everything's great, super and cool. Um, what will get a 10 on an MPS net promoter score at an American event would probably get six here in the Netherlands. And it's the same content, but it's, um, it's the same content, but it's just perceived definitely with the Dutch mentality that things can always be improved. And if you score someone out of 10, maybe the American concept is you can get into an 11. The Dutch concept is that 10 is the ultimate that we're going to be able to get to. Um, so I hope that's uh, clear to everyone. So 
That's what we do on a local level. You have to get the locals right. Then there's what we do on a national level. And this doesn't, you know, here the credit has to go to Sergey, who's not on this call, for really helping me out and setting the level of expectations, which I just then followed. Um, so um, we regularly travel, so we regularly travel to each other's meetings. We do not exist in a bubble, even if it's a, uh, we, and literally we crisscross the country up to three or four hours, uh, up to three hours drive to do that. We, we have the advantages in a small country. Without a doubt, there's some natural advantages there. Uh, but we will travel to each other's meetings, whether it's a women in tech uh, meeting, I'm an ally, but people don't know whether they can or can't go. We communicate in advance as they can, we attend. But whether it's a developers meeting, uh, we, the developers, I'm not a developer, but I go to the developers meetings. Um, and whether it's part or whether it's marketing meeting, we, you know, many of us, it's not just me, we all travel to each other's meetings, even if the content isn't seemingly interesting, meeting the characters involved, there's definitely takeaways that you can get every single time. The content won't, you know, if there's 10% of what you get out of that meeting by meeting new people and hearing the activities that they're engaged in, this is really great. And also it opens the doors so that we're not just you know, forgive me, but nameless faces on the screen. We can just meet each other and see what those personalities are and realize that we're there, we're there in person. And um, I wrote an article on Salesforce Ben about networking. It's that investment. It's that you might attend a meeting for three or four times, but then you have a question and you go, oh, I can talk to that person, that community group leader or Salesforce Saturday leader or whatever they are. And they can help me out and then you bond but you wouldn't have otherwise been able to bond unless you'd be attending those meetings all the previous times it makes it a lot easier so it's about invest it's uh, like planting seeds in the ground you do, you you plant 10 seeds in the ground you don't know which ones are going to come up maybe only three or four of them but those might be three or four very strong trees at the end of the day um can I maybe add something to that yeah go for it please okay. it's speaking and what I find with um, like traveling and, and visiting other user groups is, um, of, of course, the networking part for you know personal level, but also um, you go there as or well, I go there as, as a user group leader as well. Um, so you actually go and talk to the organizers there um, and exchange ideas, um, you know, and experience because, um, where for instance. I've, I've visited mainly the, the, so the newer user groups and they really appreciate the feedback, but it also gives me uh, some new insights because I've been doing this for three years. There's definitely some, um, how do you call it? Um, tunnel vision. Yeah, tunnel vision. Um, and then, you know, new, new ideas. So it, it works both ways. You actually, yeah, you benefit uh, from both directions. Yeah, and actually from the perspective of a uh, new um, CGL who's starting up their first group, they are being honest, sometimes overwhelmed by having that support of other community group leaders turn up. So the emotional impact that you can have on other people, I've been there, people flying from the UK to support the Amsterdam user group was huge in giving me the confidence that we were doing something correctly. Um, and also their input on looking around and spotting the personalities actually helped me um, hugely. So, um, cool. So the next part of the thing is that we then all engage with each other. We hold regular, uh, so we hold regular meetings, uh, whether it's Andre or Sergey or other people saying, let's all come out. So one of the, there was a, a, a meeting where we all just came for a social uh, then on the second time we did that, actually, an idea happened, didn't it, Andre? Yeah. Yeah. Take it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we need uh, there's all the well, there was Benelux um, region use group leaders. Uh, yeah, and that, that's when um, I came up with the idea for for your dreaming, pitched it, and well, kind of made it happen after that. Yeah, Ines, so, <laughs> your dreaming shirt. <laughs> <laughs> So there's like 400 people <clears throat> attended a community conference and it wouldn't have otherwise happened unless we'd be meeting as community group leaders because there's exchanging ideas online, but there's meeting in per person and 
just meeting at each other's flat or whatever it is. We know this, we're meeting online, but and um, I forgot, Melissa's not here. Your dream, uh, non profit dreaming, because have people happened to me online, but equally it happens with these sorts of community conferences. Um, I'm going to speed through. Um, and you're leading, of course. I mean, and you're leading, actually. You're, le yeah, it all dovetails off each other. Um, so one of the things that, so lots of the things that we do as community group leaders individually, we also do in the round. So by being authentic and having honest conversations. So when someone is running a group and we think things can be improved, we say, have you thought of trying this next time? Or I noticed that you weren't publishing on all the media forms, social media, you know, do you want to give that a try? Or why don't you get some more volunteers involved? So we kind of, it, it happens by building and supporting each other. So we do give constructive criticism to each other. And that is the environment. It helps that we're Dutch, without a doubt. Uh, but that is the environment of which it is welcomed. But also being honest, because it's like an authentic meeting, um, the groups which don't get that idea tend not to succeed. The groups that don't understand that they can support each other and don't welcome those uh, pieces of advice don't succeed so much. So we do have a successful thing, but it's about the successful groups support each other. We help the other groups along and sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't, but we put, put the investment in where it's working um, very well. For anyone watching the recording, Andre's just commented that Dutch translates into direct and borderline rude. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. For, uh, Hands up. Um, With total love, but as a Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, so what we're doing is hearing each other's voices. It's really important. Um, we, but we share the load and then we identify the gaps as a group. What we also do is engage heavily with Salesforce. So it only takes one of us to be engaging with Salesforce and everyone else comes in via that route. So if, so if one person kind of knocks down the wall to make an interaction with Salesforce, we then share. And actually that's very important about the way the Dutch community work. We, if someone's got a lead or an idea, we don't say this is our idea. And I've seen it in certain other groups. We say, we're gonna share this idea. This is great. Why don't you try it? Because what actually happens is we then all iterate on that idea making it better, changing it, making it via local group style. But we kind of keep on sharing that love, keep on sharing that knowledge. The other thing, and this actually took up uh, quite some time. So this is where I will share the screen again. The other thing that we did, and this took some time to put together and it started on the basis of a Google calendar was just the question is, what are the tools necessary to make things happen? So share. Uh, bear with me a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you can now uh, see my screen and you'll see the Dutch SF community. What it actually happened was that this started off a shared Google Calendar because anyone can set up a Gmail account. So we set up literally just a Gmail account and we added everyone in as editors. And so everyone, uh, I don't like that view. Why's that? Ah, there we go. Um, that wasn't the view that I was expecting. Let's see if that changes it. There we go, that's a better view. Um, so this is all actually just a data import from Google Calendar. And originally we were just sharing that as another overlay which you can tick on and tick off because what we do is we make sure that none of our groups have sessions at the same time as each other. It doesn't matter whether it's developers and whether one's marketing. We say that there are some people who are interested in both, let's avoid it. So we work really strongly at, and we have robust conversations when people forget to use it. And we say, by the way, you've clashed on this date. Can you bear this in mind for the future or can you reconsider it? And people go, oh yeah, sorry. And once they've been reminded once or twice, then they do it. So we just have like a calendar monitoring team and people to say, just on behalf of the calendar monitoring team, so it's not personal, we say, next time, can you do this? And because people do forget, but once they're in the habit, 
then it becomes very easy. And then because the calendar was working so nicely and Salesforce were then using it to see what's going on locally, we then just publish the Google, we have a, a WordPress uh, plugin called Tokify, and we literally just put it up on a web page. Um, and I'm happy to share with anyone how to do that. It's obviously, we tried to put a lot of information. We thought maybe we'd do blogs. And actually we just have now cut it down to something very simple. It's list the calendar. That is the one function. But it means at the end of the sessions, we say, our next session is this. There's one or two events coming up that you might be interested in. For everything else, have a look at the website so that there's a single point of entry because obviously with the communities, there's a lot of information out there. Um, Salesforce, Ben have just done their events thing, but you really want your local pitch to see what's available in your local community. And yeah, um, from memory, the, one of the other reasons why we actually started this, uh, this calendar is um, a lot of the, the, I would call them like our, our, our well, hardcore attendees. So they, uh, it's, it's a group of uh, 10 or 15 on, on average. They come to every single of our meetings for the past few years, but they also go to other meetings or meetups. Um, and there was one speaker who went in the same week, went to three different uh, meetups doing the same presentation. And we got some questions because I think we were the last one in line. And like, yeah, but we've already seen this. We can do the presentation better than the guy itself. Um, so this is also to avoid, uh, well, to give, give each other's insights um, in, in sort of the topics. So you don't have the same speaker um, in the same week three times. Yeah. And it's led to hard conversations. It's because we're all planning our content individually. And the conversation was, well, why don't you tell us that you're planning this? realistically that doesn't happen so i sign up to all the things and sometimes i've gone shit this part of my language this other group has just done the same content that we're doing now it might be with a different presenter but it's just too similar so i think all the groups have in turn just gone curse 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 we've now got to rearrange this and sometimes it's led to you know phone calls and saying you know who can give us extra content but it means that we're seen to act together and it, it, I'm going to say in public and in private, we really do act together um, and we all support each other. But it's through some transparent tools and also having that culture of supporting each other. Um, the other tools that we use is we have the Slack. We do uh, use the, now it's been renamed, the your, it was the Your Dreaming Slack. It's now the Your Leading Slack. So that various groups have their own private chat channels so they can use that to organize themselves, but also then we can, within the Benelux, to say what's happening, is this happening? That, so Andre and Justina, um, yes, you're, Justina, do you have anything to add? But it's still fun. <laughs> it's not a bad achievement, Andre. Oh, I could do another two hour presentation um, <laughs> in addition to this, but let's not do that. Um, no, not, not really much to add. Uh, no. So I was just looking at all of this. I think that it's partly about attitude. It's about helping others. It's partly about effort. And it's also about having tools, keeping it simple. Definitely. And Andre's now, go, go for it. Yeah, sorry, maybe one thing. Um, what you said before about, um, like, for instance, content and, and feedback. Uh, one thing I, I think we, well, from the MSM Music Group, we, we try and do is, uh, of course, there's the there's the, the, the surveys or, you know, the sign-up forms. We always ask, uh, and sometimes also using, like, a little interactive poll in the, during the sessions itself. Like, is there anything, any topics you would like to see? Um, and we always afterwards ask for feedback and we actually do something with that feedback and also show that we do something with the feedback. And I think that's really, um, of course, you know, useful because then we know sort of how to plan instead of we're doing our thing, we think it's great, but then, you know, we have two, <laughs> two attendees um, and no one likes it. Uh, but it also f to actually for community building, I think that's important to um, to not have a gap between organizers and attendees. Like it's still one community. 
very much so. And actually, we should say as a community, we've now really got a, it started. It's a Salesforce Saturday WhatsApp, but it's about finding a tool for the community to be able to continue that conversation in the meantime. And those that want to opt in do, and those that don't, that's absolutely fine. But it's just something to keep it going and work out what your local tooling. For instance, we asked three three questions beforehand, which is what what do you want to know? What can you offer? And what do you think your other uh, community leaders need? And I must give a shout out to someone. I won't name them unless they want me to. But the uh, beautiful answer is, what do you think your other community leaders need? Hugs. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Does anyone have questions? Otherwise, I'm going to take it uh, and then we'll press the stop button and just have a, a chat amongst themselves. Um, this is all recorded. The chat section won't be. So does anyone have questions about what I presented any thoughts not really a question this is Rob not really a question but uh, I can't uh, stress enough that uh, you don't know uh, what you don't know yeah you said I also go to meetings if I'm not sure whether the subject is going to be interesting to me uh, but there's a lot of things <coughs> that I would never have asked for uh, but by going to a meeting, and I went there uh, the first time, particularly because I had the feeling there should be more certain questions that I couldn't get answered. But uh, who on earth would ever ask or Google for the power of null uh, to give it uh, the power of zero? Uh, to give an example, uh, yeah, there's, there's certain things that you get out of there. Uh, very stupid thing maybe but uh, i think it was sergey that once had a, a meeting uh, on the uh, epic change and not on the epic change but uh, he mentioned also something like excel connector uh enabler for excel which i really love i would never have known of the existence if i hadn't been at that meeting so yeah i think it is uh, and, and then when you have received something, it's, it feels, feels good if you can also share that out again with other people and you may be able to help someone else. That, and that's kind of the point. That's why we're all here. It's because we love paying it forward. It's, mm -hmm. it, we both love learning and paying it forward. It's, uh, I mean, like, you know, I, I, Bob actually was one of the original user group uh, leaders. I look at Andre who was standing. So on, this is the la last thing, then we'll stop. Andre was standing next to me the, at the meeting where I was discussing with Sergey and the person that set up the original informal user group. Andre happened to be standing next to me and I said, so we're all going to be user group leaders then? And he went, yes. And, and Andre nodded. And then I went to the other user group leaders afterwards. I was like, oh, I didn't recognize that chap. Do you know him? And they went, no. And Andre has now led the community group. It is the cause and the reason why there was the very successful you're dreaming and is a great friend of mine so uh, there you go uh i yeah eyes tears um because he's just such a lovely person and yeah we we have an amazing community here and if you want uh yeah and anyone's got any questions then you can also message us privately and things like that as well um and it should be pointed out that uh amsterdam user group uh is now led two-thirds by women and one-third by men so we are very happy that box. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.